Hey there, my name is Sage and you are watching D&D Daily. Today I'm going to be doing a deep dive into the Knowledge Domain Cleric subclass. Before jumping into my deep dives, I like to talk about how I personally evaluate a subclass. I like to look for what is unique and special about the subclass and try and build my build around that. So, if there is something that is weaker that the subclass offers that the main class does not, I will take it despite it being weaker, just because I like the unique flavor. Alright, let's jump into it. At level 1, we learn two languages, and we also gain proficiency in two skills, as well as expertise in those skills, so our proficiency bonus is doubled. Those skills are Arcana, History, Nature, and Religion. Compared to other clerics, our features impact our combat potential far less. While other clerics are getting heavy armor, martial weapons, cantrips from other classes, we're getting a couple skills. That said, the skills we get can be useful. The standouts to me are religion on arcana. Religion is often called upon in monster stat blocks to say, hey, what can you read about this monster based off of your religion check? And as far as arcana goes, it is useful for spell breaking, casting dispel magic, and counter spell, and making sure that you're casting that spell at the most efficient level. It's also just useful for every magic item you're going to run in throughout the campaign in every magical situation, which in most campaigns for D&D, I feel like it'd be safe to say is going to be quite often. We also get the command and identify spells. The unique spell we pick up at level 1 is Command. This is a very versatile and great spell. In combat, it can be used to tell an enemy to flee when they're surrounded by your melee compatriots, and they all get opportunity attacks. Or you can tell them to grovel and they'll drop to the ground, and now everyone has advantage on their attacks. It's kind of an alley-oop spell in combat. It, you're not really going to be doing a lot with it, but you're setting up your teammates to do a lot with it. Now, out of combat, it can also be useful. For example, if you're trying to get an item, you can order someone to drop it, and they will have to drop it, and then you can pick it up and run type thing. As for Identify, it is a limitedly useful spell. Unfortunately, you can get most of the benefits from just doing a short rest, and it takes 10 minutes to do it this way, or you could do it in an hour just as a natural short rest and not have to prepare the spell. So that's why Identify is kind of on the weaker end, weaker than I'd like it to be. But if your DM is like me, you remove that ability from short rest, and so Identify becomes invaluable in that case, where you either have to experiment or cast Identify to figure out what the item is. An often forgotten about, but probably more important piece of Identify is when you cast it on a creature, you can identify any magical influences on them. At level two, we pick up our channel divinity, knowledge of the ages. This simply lets us gain proficiency in any skill or any tool for 10 minutes. It'll never be used inside of combat. It's a pure utility channel divinity. So in combat heavy days, we're going to be taking advantage of the cleric's new optional feature that lets us use our channel divinity to gain back spell slots. This ability outside of combat is extremely versatile, however. if you need to be good at sneaking, all of a sudden you're good at sneaking. If you need to be a master at history, all of a sudden you have all the training. It's a magical proficiency, meaning you just magically gain a skill set. This includes tools, so if you all of a sudden need to craft something, okay, now I'm proficient in Smith's tools and you can get started on a project though. It's in 10 minute increments, so doing a large scale project is probably not gonna work that great. This feature and the expertise we get at level one kind of carves out a knowledge domain niche, which is a skill monkey, something usually only found in rogues or bards. At level three, we get augury and suggestion. Augury is among my favorite spells and I think it deserves a whole video on its own, but let's dive into it a little bit here. Augury is a ritual that we can cast twice a day to gain information about a course of action we're going to be taking in the next 30 minutes. The information that we're going to receive is going to be will, woe, will and woe or nothing. Will means generally positive, woe means generally negative, will and woe means both at the same time, and nothing means a neutral neither. The key to this spell is what course of action you're targeting with it. For example, if you say, I want to enter this city, is that a good idea? Well, cities are full of criminals or they might be full of good people and it's going to be both. It's almost certainly going to be both because you chose such a general course of action. However, saying picking up this sword, is that will or woe, will and woe, or both, something far more specific, you're gonna get far more useful information. If you get woe on picking up a weapon that's clearly magical, then you probably know it's cursed. Really useful information. Something I would really encourage you to do with augury is lean into the flavor. How do you speak to your god and how do they speak back? This is a really great opportunity to mix in some flavor and do something really cool. As a knowledge domain cleric, maybe you see it through a book. 
Who knows? What would you do to make your augury super cool? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, at level 3, we get Suggestion, which is a top-tier spell at most levels. In combat, it can be used to basically take someone completely out of combat by convincing them that, hey, your wife needs you at home, head home, type idea. Out of combat, it can fix a myriad of problems, including getting items, telling somebody to scram, telling somebody to give you information. It's just so versatile and so powerful. Keep in mind, there is a rubber clause in the text of Suggestion, and that rubber clause is all done in one word, which is reasonable. How your D DM interprets reasonable can make suggestion either a very open and versatile spell or a very restricted one. So you're just going to have to try it and see how your DM responds to it. We're finding another niche for the Knowledge Domain Cleric here with Command and Suggestion. We're finding ourselves to be more of an enchanter than most clerics are. Moving on to level 5, we pick up Non-Detection and Speak with Dead. Non-Detection feels like a DM spell to me, but I have heard people say it's a completely broken spell for players. I'm a little bit dubious about that. What is suggested is to make your normal items seem magical and then sell them as if they were magical for extra money. Or you can make a duplicate of an item, make yours seem magical, make theirs not seem magical and swap them. Or it can be used to fool for infiltration type missions. Prove me wrong, I kind of feel like it's one of those spells that you have to make work as opposed to it just working naturally. You have to go out of your way to make it seem good. But prove me wrong. In the comments down below, if you've had a really awesome non-detection moment or can think of one, let me know. Show me what you got. And while you're down there, why don't you hit the subscriber button? It's not gonna bite, just give it a little tickle. Moving on to Speak With Dead, it's a spell that every cleric can cast, but I feel like it has a special place in the Knowledge Domain Cleric spell list. And the reason behind that is we are seekers of knowledge, and sometimes people, dead people, are the best sources of that knowledge. So if we find someone really important from the past, we would be talking to them often, and as morbid as it is, probably keep their corpse around so we can talk to them again in 10 days. It would be part of our role-playing, I would think. At level 6, we get a new channel divinity in Read Thoughts. This is very similar, but not the exact same, to the spell Detect Thoughts. Detect Thoughts has no save to read the surface level thoughts. It then has a saving throw to dig deeper and read the deeper thoughts that they have. And it can also be used to detect people who think in a radius around you, so it can kind of be great for infiltration missions to know if there's a person in that room or not type thing. Read Thoughts, on the other hand, begins with a saving throw to get the surface level thoughts. It has no option to dig deeper, but it does come with a suggestion spell that's attached to it. Even if this was just suggestion, it would still be great, and it has extra benefits on top of that making it really great. With this feature, Speak With Dead and Augury, we're finding ourselves another niche in a information gatherer using magical abilities. Interrogations, investigations, gathering information for accurate decision making are all something that this cleric can do that most cannot. Now something to note here is that we are doubling our features up on Channel Divinity, which is one pool of resources. So it might be hard to use your Knowledge of the Ages Channel Divinity when you know that it's going to get rid of a potential suggestion later. So a lot of clerics don't have to double up on their Channel Divinity. We do, which is a little bit of a downside. At level 7, we pick up Arcane Eye and Confusion. Arcane Eye is a premium scouting spell and it adds scouting to our knowledge gathering repertoire. It can be super useful for gathering information in that manner where there's shady stuff going down or it can just be used to scout ahead of a dungeon. Knowing what's ahead of you is very invaluable and Arcane Eye is going to help us get there. Confusion on the other hand is a combat spell. It is a mass area debuff. Something clerics notably lack. It's not the best mass debuff in the game, but it's awesome on the cleric spell list because it's a mass debuff period. And it's a pretty good one. Uh, there's an 80% chance that it's going to make them do basically nothing on their turn, which is pretty solid. This will probably end up being one of our go-to spells when damage isn't the answer to the combat. We pick up potent spell casting at level 8, and considering that we have zero melee options, we're going to take this over the Bless Strikes alternative. At level 9, we pick up Legend Lore and Scrying, continuing our informational gathering niche. Legend Lore is an in-game lore drop mechanic. DMs are either going to love it or hate it. You're going to take a look at an item or a person and be like, tell me their history. The more you know, the more accurate it gets, and the less you know, the more general it can get. But now the DM gets to show off this awesome history they created, or their improv skills, 
or the fact that they have neither of those. <laughs> and that's going to separate the DMs who love this spell and the DMs who do not like this spell. But for you, it's a fun spell that you can learn a lot about the history of your world. Scrying is another spell that I would encourage you to flavor uniquely for your character. What does your character look at to be looking at other places on this plane? So with the Knowledge Domain Cleric, again, I can see them looking inside a book and instead of seeing words, they're seeing Canada. Now this ends our spell list and many of you might think that was a underwhelming spell list. It had very little in the way of combat, mostly relying on suggestion, command, and confusion. Everything else was non-combat. However, I would disagree. I think information gathering is an incredibly important, yet hard to quantify element in D&D. Yes, somebody else's spell might be able to nuke all of the goblins, but your spells let you learn exactly where the goblins are and exactly how to approach them. You can avoid the combat altogether Together, or you could take it from an extremely advantageous position because of your informational gathering skills. You don't need to nuke things when you don't put yourself in a position that you have to nuke things. Again, it's going to depend on the campaign, your DM, and your skill in using information gathering, which a lot of it comes down to. This is really hard to quantify, but I think it's very important. And more importantly than all of that, this spell list helps solidify the Knowledge Domain Cleric's flavor. We are not meant to be super combative, we are meant to gather knowledge, and we do that magically very efficiently. Level 17 brings us the Visions of the Past feature, and this is one of the weirdest features in the game, it's even hard to kind of describe. It definitely continues in the vein of gathering information magically. It will have absolutely zero in combat application. What it will do is tell you the history of an object, similar to legend lore, or give you a vision of an area's past 20 days, assuming you have 20 wisdom. And you get to kind of re-watch it like a movie. Really unique, really flavorful, I love it. I imagine it's invaluable to a murder investigation where you can just hit rewind and watch everything take place because you can, as long as the murder took place in the last 20 days, you can find out exactly who it is nearly instantly. But overall, it would be safe to say that its power level is quite low despite my love for it, unfortunately. To some, that may mean you'll never play the Knowledge Domain Cleric, but for me, I like it. I love it. I don't care that it's not the best power level feature. I think it's a really cool and unique one, and I want it on my Knowledge Domain Cleric. If you want to see a build done around a Knowledge Domain Cleric, check out our video, Sheeton. I don't know where we're going to put the video. It could be in one of the corners. could be in the description. I don't know. You'll find it. I believe in you. The Knowledge Domain Cleric definitely falls into the Cleric Caster region of clerics. Usually I can see clerics as either upfront gishes or midline casters, usually support. We add some control with confusion, command, and suggestion, but overall we're not going to be shining in combat. We're mostly just going to be a base cleric in combat, which is still great for most levels. But where we're really, really going to shine is outside of combat. We can be a skill monkey, a scout, a spy, an interrogator, an investigator, or just a general information gatherer so we can make accurate decisions. Its power level comes on a little slower than other clerics and falls off a little bit faster than other clerics. Late game and brand new early game, we're not going to be as powerful in combat as some of the other clerics are. However, we're going to be gathering information better than they can, and again, although hard to quantify, I feel like it's a valuable piece that we can bring to our party. And take note that other clerics aren't going to be as good at investigation, spying, scouting, all those things that we're amazing at, other clerics can't do. So that's what we should focus on when we're a knowledge domain cleric. Throughout my deep dives into the cleric subclasses and the cleric class itself, I am going to talk about, and this is the first time I'm saying it, but I believe I'm going to say it many more times, that it doesn't matter what cleric you pick. All clerics are strong enough to go through a level 20 campaign and be perfectly valuable to the party. So it doesn't matter what subclass you pick as far as power level goes, it matters far more what kind of flavor you're diving for. And knowledge domain clerics have their own unique niche of flavor, which is more important to me than their power level. All right, this has been my knowledge domain Main cleric a deep dive. We are D&D Daily. We release new D&D content every single day, so we will see you tomorrow. Peace out.